Okie dokie, here we are. It is Music Radio Creative Live for a Monday. As we do the show live, Monday to Friday from 2pm to 3pm UK time. And hopefully the time zone that I'm in now has synced up with your time zone. If you have fallen back uh, for the fall or autumn, as we say, this side of the pond, uh, with your clocks and all the resetting and now everything is looking back to normal. Hopefully for you. If you're watching on the replay, feel free to skip ahead by just over two minutes and get straight into the start of the show where we're looking at Adobe Audition shortcuts for faster editing times. We all like to speed things up, so that's coming up very soon. Uh, meanwhile, feel free to make yourself known in the chat, in the live chat. I would love to know uh, who is watching and tuning in right now. So let me know. I can see uh, that many of you are indeed watching right now. So let me know who you are and where you are watching from. I'll give you a quick shout. You need to do it quick in the next 30 seconds before we get into the countdown. And then the show gets going. Uh, David Silk is here. The show is in your honour today, sir. Uh, otherwise known as Mr. Shortcuts over on the Music Radio Creative community. David Hunter's in. Uh, we got uh, Azambuns. We got Benny Boy here. We got Spectrums as well. Hassan Yama. We've got Paige in. Hi, Paige. Paul Orr is here. Beanie Draws. Robert Doerman. Sanjay as well. Beanie. Nice to see you from Australia. Stand by. We're getting going in one minute from now. Testing the left speaker. Left. left. Testing the right speaker. Right. right. Testing phaser. 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 All frequency sweep. Now. Stand by. Stand by. Stand by for music radio creative live with Mike Russell. MRC Live. Music Radio Creative Live. With Mike Russell. Starting in 30 seconds. A big hello to you, by the way. I am Mike Russell from musicradiocreative.com. It's amazing to be right here on your screen, on your, your internet device, wherever you are right now. Welcome along to the show. If you've never tuned in before, this show is for you if you like creating amazing audio. So you could be on radio, you could be a DJ, you could be, uh, well, anything really, a podcaster. You know. That's the kind of stuff we cover in this show, so welcome along. It's great to have you here. Your audio production hour starts now. Music Radio Creative.com. Oh, let's have another one. Here we go. One more jingle. No, maybe two more jingles. Two more. The audio guru is here. He knows Adobe Audition in and downtown is here to help you out. Mike Russell. And a little bit of the uh, the feminine. Go on then. There you go. All right, now I feel good and ready to go. Uh, how are you? <laughs> Let me know uh, how you're doing, uh, where you're watching from right now. Thank you for all those thumbs up. Oh, you're going like crazy on Facebook at the moment. I can see you wherever you're watching, just in case you wondered, because uh, we do multi-stream across many platforms. We're on YouTube Live, uh, Facebook Live. You can catch us on Periscope, also on Twitch, and uh, a number of other networks that I can't mention that are based in, in Russia and, and China and all over. Not, not I can't mention because I can't, but because it would just take the whole show to go through <laughs> all the networks we're on. If you wonder, by the way, how we um, multi-stream so many different locations at once, I quite often get asked that question. Uh, just go to mrc.fm slash restream. That's mrc.fm slash restream, and you'll discover the technology we use. Um, most of it is free. There are a few paid upgrades if you want to do uh, crazy things with it. Uh, but if you're considering doing your own sort of live streaming show and you want to take advantage of all the wonderful social media platforms that are out there, mrc.fm slash restream is the place to go. 
Thanks for all those comments. Keep them coming in. I will mention them in about uh, 13 minutes from now. I usually mention comments every 15 minutes during the show. Um, we're going to get into Adobe Audition shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts and hacks and stuff like that. And I've got to say a big thank you and a big, big shout out to one of the moderators in our community. Uh, does so much good we- work. Week work. <laughs> work during the week. Uh, his name is David Silk. And um, yeah, fantastic contributor. You'll often see him in the YouTube live chat with a spanner next to his name. Uh, he's also over at community.music radiocreative.com uh, throwing out value bombs all the time and I've printed off his uh, his wiki post from the community uh, David has painstakingly uh, curated uh, tips uh, not only from himself but also other members of the community and sort of formatted it to look nice and if you want to access it in digital form so that's lots and lots of useful Adobe Audition keyboard shortcuts go to mrc.fm slash shortcuts and it'll take you straight to the post you can contribute your own ideas as well um, this may well be a show by the way that you want to uh, sort of not only watch live but also come back again to the replay and maybe rewind and say oh how, how did yeah that was interesting I want to watch how uh, that happened and, and bits like that so we're going to go through uh, some basics and some things you might not have done before some things you might find handy um, for instance here as you can see I'm in the multi-track of Audition uh, multi-track if you've never used it before is brilliant such a great invention because you can move things around to different tracks and in time like that and it's just wonderful so I'll show you some shortcuts of the multi-track uh, but you can also work in the waveform view now, shortcut keys to switch uh, very quickly between them are the numbers 9 and 0. Look at that, 9 and 0. I'm hitting on my keyboard there. Uh, the numbers right there on my keyboard. See, uh, 0 will take me to multi-track, 9 will take me to waveform. Uh, pretty cool stuff. I'm used to just clicking up here, multi-track and waveform. But if you want to do it really quickly, yeah, 0, 9, uh, something definitely worth uh, getting used to. People often ask me as well, Mike, how do you zoom so fluidly uh, in Adobe Audition? How do you get things like zooming in and out uh, to the precise place you want? And it's like with anything, once you work with it for a little while, you kind of get used to it. Uh, one thing I had a little bit of a learning curve when I started working in Adobe Premiere Pro, I discovered that the zoom on the sequence, um, which is the equivalent of multi-track, I guess, in Premiere, is slightly different to Adobe Audition. Um, but what I use, I don't use anything magical at all. I have reviewed various products before, such as uh, the Shuttle Express and the Shuttle Pro uh, and bits like that. But I am simply using uh, an Apple Magic Mouse. And these are absolutely uh, fantastic devices. Now, if you're not an Apple user, you might just get a, a mouse with a scroll wheel or a jog wheel. It can do a similar thing. The reason I really like the Apple Magic Mouse, and I'm, I'm, I think they, they retail for about uh, £40 here in the UK, which I don't know, maybe they, they're the equivalent in the US of $40 or so, um, is that you can go down like that. As you can see, as I'm doing that, it's actually zooming on the waveform there. Um, but you can also go across. You see like this, as I move across, and there's no physical wheels or jogs on here, but you can do the zooming in and out and the the moving in time, uh, just with really intuitive actions. It's almost kind of like an iPad uh, swipe you know, on, on your mouse. And I guess that's that's why Apple is so good at what they do because they just design things that are slick and easy to use. And I, I have yet to find anything that's easier to use for zooming in and out than an Apple Magic Mouse. But I stand to be corrected or enhanced upon on, on that. And what I'm doing here in the waveform, when I want to zoom in, I'm going up to this, this top kind of ruler here, which gives me the time of the clip that I'm working with. This is actually a voiceover from a podcast intro I've been working on. And when I'm on there, I can just go up, no, or down, down to zoom in, and then up to zoom out. And of course, across left and right, we'll, uh, we'll move across in time on there. You can do similar things on the side here to uh, make the amplitude smaller or bigger. This won't actually change the volume of your wave. It just changes the zoom in case you want to get a different perspective on your audio. Same with uh, spectral frequency. So you can do that. Although I don't really find that too handy because uh, obviously you zoom in, uh, but you're zooming into... Uh, oh, it's zooming all on its own there. There we go. You're zooming into the, the frequencies between, well, sort of 4.8 and 4.9 kilohertz, which is, is not really very exciting. Um, but there are other ways you can zoom on spectral frequency. Uh, for instance, if I right click, uh, you've got these shortcuts here. Oh, you can't see them because they're kind of covered by the uh, the chat window. So hang on, let's just move this over. Oh, what a lovely background I've got on today. Look at that trees and clouds and everything uh, so right click here and you can make it more logarithmic or more linear uh, and that is um, 
a shortcut of Alt or Option, Command and Up. So it would be uh, Control, Alt and Up on a PC. And let's see what the difference is. Uh, up, you see you're increasing there the bass, so I can really zoom in. If there's some popping or something on the microphone, I can really look at those bass frequencies and, and work on that. And then down again, and that brings the full range of frequencies. Whoa. Uh, so as you can see, that's now an even spread of frequencies. But often, I won't have it set like that because sometimes most recordings don't really go above uh, around 16,000 hertz, uh, usually 20,000 hertz. But... Um, it's, I, I kind of go for something like that that squashes up uh, the high end and kind of gives me a nice view of the, the, the mids and, and the bass like that. Uh, there was also something else. Uh, you've got obviously full logarithmic and full linear. Uh, again, you can, you can choose which way you want to go with that. Uh, increase spectral resolution. This is a good one. Uh, shift, command and up or shift, c control and up if you're on a PC. And you can do that to really increase or decrease the resolution. Uh, see, like that, it's getting like an 8-bit video game. But that's if you're playing around with frequencies and doing like editing or noise reduction and bits like that. Uh, that's, that's kind of a little bit advanced as well in a way. You have got you can change different things here by right-clicking, by the way, on this menu, zooming in and out on the amplitude, uh, changing the decibels from decibels to percentage volume. Did you know you can do that? You can view the percentage volume if you want. So anything that hits 100% is right up at the max. Sample values, normalized values, all of that. Uh, best to work in decibels, though. That's what we all kind of know and love. Um, now I'm going to show you something super handy. Before I get through some more of these shortcuts that uh, David and others have contributed in the community that will be useful for your editing in Adobe Audition, I wanted to show you something that you might find really handy uh, in Audition. It applies to CC 2018, but really any edition of Adobe Audition. Uh, it's the favorites menu, and it works fantastically well in the waveform view of Adobe Audition. You can make um, favorites here that execute a number of different um, processes for you, and you can assign any favorite to a hotkey. Now, how do you see uh, what, what keyboard shortcuts you've got assigned already? Uh, well, you can get into them really easily uh, by hitting, I think it is Alt and K. Yes, Alt and K, or Option K if you're on a Mac. And this has only been available, see up there, uh, just over up, up there, it's like a, a colorful keyboard layout. It's only recently become available, I think even this year, the year of 2017, that this has actually become available. They rolled it out in Premiere Pro, first of all, uh, but now you've got this wonderful uh, visual um, kind of keyboard, so you can see uh, what's going on if you if you click any of the keys, what's going to happen. And this will be different, of course, uh, in multi-track, you can save different presets as well. Oh, look at that. Avid Pro Tools. I didn't add that. <laughs> so I guess that's interesting. If you click the layout preset, those of you moving over from Pro Tools to Audition, uh, there's a little preset there to help you make the transition easier. Just makes a few tweaks, but interesting. I didn't know that. Um, so anything that you can do in any of these menus can be assigned to a hotkey, and I highly advise it. But also anything you put into the favorites menu, and there are some presets that come here preloaded with Audition, you can assign to a hotkey. Now you'll see the, the hotkey letter N is unassigned by default in Audition. And this is something I often assign straight away, is I'll go into the favorites menu. So you see the shortcuts down here are all laid out in the same fashion as they are up here in the menu bar. So when I find the favorites menu here, normalized to minus 0.1 dB, uh, essentially uh, increases the amplitude so the, the, the biggest peak hits minus 0 0.1. Always like using this. I use this a number of times daily. Um, so I advise you assign it to a shortcut key. And as the N is available, N for normalize, let's do that. Um, so what you do is click in there so you get a little box. Can you see that? It's turned into a little box. And if I hit the letter N, there we go, it, it now tells me that normalize to minus 0 0.1 dB is assigned to the N hotkey. If I try to assign something like, let's do the raise pitch, uh, and we'll assign that to R, which is currently used for razor, uh, which is uh, that razor, if you want to have the razor tool, it's going to, first of all, say the shortcut R is already in use by the command razor. The command will no longer have a shortcut. Um, if I didn't want to do that, so it's good it warns me if I'm overwriting uh, a previous shortcut, I can just undo it. Boom. Done. No problems. Uh, and then it will tell me that the keyboard layout is now custom. And as I don't believe you could do in the past, now, since the uh, 
not the recent updates to Adobe Audition CC 2018, but the latest updates that came, I think, back in April this year, you can now save this as a preset. So I can actually call this uh, Mike's Awesome Keyboard Shortcuts. What a long name <laughs> for a preset, but hey, there you go. And now I can, I can customize this to my heart's content. This is saved as a preset, and I'll always be able to access this. Now, this is interesting. Copy to clipboard. Um, and I'm guessing, how, how does that work in practicality? I'm guessing it probably copies text of what you're up to. Let's open uh, a text editor. I use Sublime Text. And let's see if we can paste it. Whoa. Okay, that's cool. I, <laughs> that might be handy for you if you want to print out all of the shortcuts available to you inside Adobe Audition. That's pretty cool. So if you're inside this uh, keyboard shortcuts window, if you copy to clipboard, it is going to give you uh, a text version of all the shortcuts you have assigned inside Audition. You might want to print that out and put it next to your bed and, uh, you know, save it to read just before you go to bed. So subliminally, it goes into your subconscious and you just know what keys to push when you're in Audition. Um, but otherwise, if you're like most of the rest of us, you'll just want to assign your favorites. Normalize is a good one. Um... Another good one is to use a key uh, to insert silences. So let me show you now that I've I've added normalize. Say if I take this audio here and hit the N key, see how it just increases so that that peak there is at minus 0 0.1 dB. And again, I can do it over here. N, normalize that audio. Helps me to sort of normalize all the audio in this voice session quite nicely. There you go, all done. But often I'll want to insert silences in between the speaking bits uh, just to clean up a voice session. Uh, often we'll do that uh, before sending it to a client so everything sounds nice and crisp and you only get audio uh, where you want it. You can also use noise gates as well uh, and stuff like that. Highly recommend doing things like that. But it is nice to be able to uh, assign silence to a hotkey. And there are a few ways you can do this. Let's go back into keyboard shortcuts here. Let's use, for example, the X key uh, as silence, uh, seeing as that's not assigned. And we'll search for silence. Uh, insert silence. Silence selected clips in time select. Um, effects. Silences. The audio in the current selection is the one we want. Because there are many different types of silences. So if you insert a silence, you'd have to say, I want the silence to be this long. But in most cases, I would be highlighting an area and then hitting the hotkey. I'll show you how it'll work. So you want the one under the effects menu. Again, click here under the shortcut uh, bit. And let's use X for silence. Click OK. That's going to save into Mike's awesome keyboard shortcuts here. And then I can see here on spectral frequency, actually, we've inserted some silences already here, uh, but not at the end of the voice session here. Select that little bit. X. Boom. See, all the noise is gone. That is just pure silence now. And that can come in handy. And there are loads of other things you can do. You can record your own favorites. In fact, I'll show you how to record a favorite and save it as a, um, a hotkey. So you can do like four or five things with the press of one button, which is amazingly powerful in Adobe Audition. Before I do that, though, as always during the show, I like to uh, mention what you're doing in the live chat. And uh, like I say, this might be one you want to roll back and watch some more because we're going to get into some heavy shortcuts and easy ways to um, speed up your editing time. If you feel so inclined to give me a phone call, by the way, you can always call whenever I'm live, but only when I'm live. If you call when I'm not live, you'll just get an answer phone. And that's fine. You can leave a lovely message. This is the telephone number. It's a US number, by the way. 415-800-1055. Remember to add plus one if you're outside the United States. And check how much it's going to cost before calling. Music Radio Creative. Okay, so what do we got here? Feel free to ask questions. I don't always mention that at the start of the show, but I'm always more than happy to mention any questions you have at all uh, when you're watching me. If you're in the live chat, if you're not, if you're watching the replay, obviously I can't always do that, but that's what the community is there for. Uh, but you can ask questions, and I will do my best to answer them. Uh, the Elway Show. I do love these understated intros. What you mean with the back-to-back -back jingles all the time? I know. <laughs> I'm a bit of a jingle freak, it has to be said. Uh, hi, Beanie Draws, by the way. Uh, I believe you mentioned you're from Australia. New viewer to the show. Uh, subscribed to me very recently. That's awesome. How did you find me, Beanie? Let me know. I'm always interested to hear how, um, how you're discovering this channel, uh, which is really, really cool to see. Um, what else? Uh, <laughs> what's that? 
The Elway Show. Uh, some really nice comments from The Elway Show today. Uh, Mr. Mega Radio UK asking how my weekend was. It was very nice indeed. Uh, we did go to uh, his bonfire night last night here in the UK and we went to a wonderful fireworks display on the Isle of Wight. Uh, yes, uh, blew up uh, £6,000 worth of fireworks from a barge in the middle of the water uh, in the Solent. It was absolutely wonderful. Uh, so yeah, I had a good weekend, took the kids down and they... Loved it. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, Eric's in from Jakarta, Indonesia. Nice to see you there. Uh, oh, David has found some new automation hacks. Share them, share them, David. Uh, post them up in the community. Uh, yeah, always appreciate that. Greg's in from Maryland, USA. Uh, is Mike British? Yes, <laughs> you got that one. <laughs> Although I prefer to think of myself as a citizen of the world. Uh, lived in Australia for a bit. Um, Travelled around to a few countries. Uh, yes, but originally uh, from Kent in the UK, now living on the Isle of Wight. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, let's see. Anything else we should mention? Uh, make some automation keyframes. Hold shift and grab one. Ooh. Okay, that's interesting. Hold, you, you have to go a little bit further with what you'd like me to do there. <laughs> I'm struggling to process that command, uh, David. Uh, Lewis is in. Hey, I uh, hope everything's moving along well. Lovely to see you as always, Lewis. Thanks for, for joining in here. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, David is throwing out loads of uh, information in the chat, which is lovely. Uh, Paige says, I can't edit without a mouse. Sorry, Paige, I can't feature your, your comment. It's not allowing me to at the moment, but uh, maybe it's because of the emoji. Sometimes our, our app throws a, a wobbly when I try to feature some questions. I can't edit without the mouse, says Paige. I'm a news reporter and speed is totally key. I've been on the scene screaming at my computer when I try to edit with the trackpad. Yes, yes, no, no, no. Trackpad is just not good, is it? Not good at all. Um, what else have we got? So thank you, David, for continuing to share some some great uh, comments and uh, knowledge there. Uh, oh, yes, Lewis asking, uh, will a list of shortcuts be available in the community? There's a wonderfully maintained uh, post by David Silk in the community. It's a wiki, so anyone can kind of contribute. Uh, just go to mrc.fm slash shortcuts to see that, mrc.fm slash shortcuts. And David there, who's another fantastic moderator, uh, has just posted the link there for you to uh, follow if you should so like. Right, let's get back to it. And uh, I did want to uh, create a wonderful uh, favorite so I can show you how that works. Uh, so say we got some audio here from a voice artist. Uh, let's just copy this bit into a new file and paste. Who are looking to build a successful business on the side. Yeah, I'm looking to build a successful business on the side. Thank you very much. Um, so um, this is something I've covered in one of my videos before, the ENCN process, where you EQ, you normalize, you compress and normalize again. Uh, and if you're doing processes like that, you, it might be in this day and age, you might be trying to meet a loudness standard very quickly. Anything uh, that can be done with the effects menu can also be done uh, in a favor and uh, quickly on a shortcut as well. Um, oh, and by the way, another hack in the favorites menu. If you assign any favorite to a shortcut, the shortcut hotkey appears next to your favorite. So let's start recording a favorite now. I'll just unselect everything there. Favorites, start recording favorite. Uh, yeah, it gives me a load of um, stuff about what's actually going on. I can say don't show the alert again. Click OK. And it is now recording your favorite. How do you know that's happening? Well, there's a really tiny thing. Hang on. Let me just make this a bit smaller and zoom in. Okay, I'm just going to zoom right in, and then I'm going to just... Move this down here. Hang on, I'm getting confused with um, the uh, text in the background. But if you look right there, it says recording favorite. Okay, recording favorite. So that is the only way you know that you're recording a, a favorite inside Adobe Audition. And it's, um, yeah, it's well worth knowing uh, that that's going on. So now anything I do in Audition will be recorded. Uh, select all, first of all, and then we might normalize. Um, or no, first of all, we might EQ. So let's EQ. Uh, effects. EQ. Uh, let's go for parametric equalizer, and we'll just do a, a a sort of little bit of the trebles, maybe the mid range, and we'll just roll off some bass. This is a very generic EQ that uh, we may well want to apply to voiceovers on a regular basis. Click apply. That's done. Very subtly EQing there. And then we'll go to favorites and normalize. And then we'll go into effects, amplitude and compression. I'm going to use the brand new dynamics uh, effect that came out with Audition CC 2018. And I'm going to apply a compressor. It's going to have a threshold of minus, minus 25. And anything you do, by the way, is, is recorded. So if I say minus 25 and a ratio of, let's say, 3 to 1, 
attack and release okay. Uh, makeup maybe a little bit less than that. Makeup can be 5 dB. Well, actually, no, let's make it 0 dB because we're going to normalize it again. Click apply. Boom, done. And then favorites normalize again. Done and dusted. EQ'd, normalized, compressed, normalized. Uh, favorites, uh, stop recording the favorite. And we'll call this Mike's Time Saver. And it can really be anything you like to do on a regular basis in audition. Get it into a favorite as fast as you can. Um, and as you can see with this now, the, the voice is going to sound better. It's going to be better compressed. And I can do that on demand now with a favorite. Let's go and grab another bit of this voice here, maybe this bit. And we'll go into favorites and I'll run Mike's time saver. Do, 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 do. Boom. Done. There you go. Uh, four processes done very, very quickly. And then the next hack is Alt K uh, or Option K. And we're going to go, let's grab a key I like the look of that's unassigned at the moment. Let's use the A key. Uh, and we'll uh, we'll just do a search here in the search box. I, I could go to uh, favorites menu here, pop it down and find it. But I could also type Mike's. And there it is, Mike's time saver. Assign it to shortcut key uh, A, which is unassigned. Mike's time saver is now on key A. Click OK. Into the favorites menu. There it is, Mike's time saver, ready to use. And I can go through any audio now. Click A. And within a matter of a couple of seconds, boom, Mike's time saver is applied. Uh, I used to do this all the time, but now I have a, a pretty sweet multi-track setup that can do most of this stuff for me in the multi-track. Uh, and as I've built out um, a template I'm really happy with, which, by the way, you can um, you can check out for yourself at mrc.fm slash presets. Uh, I use this template, and it does a lot of what I'm doing over in the waveform view automatically here uh, with multiple tracks and buses. So really cool stuff favorites take advantage of them and something again that was introduced either this year or last year is the ability to edit favorites um, and I know this was a big question so somebody might say hey I've recorded this awesome uh, preset Mike's time saver it's got four steps in it or maybe it's even got six or seven steps it's like I don't want to have to record the preset all over again I'd like to edit the part where I was setting the threshold on the compressor and instead of making it minus 25 dB I wanted to make it minus 30 but I don't have to repeat six or seven steps again I want to just edit that bit well you can edit favorites it's really cool here uh, and here we go you've got like a favorite box here let's just undock it for a moment and pop it out and make it a bit bigger and in fact what I can do bring this into the center and zoom 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 there we go uh, so now you can see this favorites box is really cool you'll find Mike's time saver with the uh, the a shortcut assigned whack this over and now you can see every single step in um, my favorite here and I can go right in and say okay the point where I applied dynamics processing I want to edit just that bit and you see it also works with selection so relative but you can do absolute from start absolute from end as well but usually I stick to relative which means any audio you select uh, this effect will apply to and then there's a little pencil here edit the selected action and you'll see now it pops up that compressor and I can say okay now I want to make the uh, the threshold minus 30 dB save it boom that is now saved into Mike's time saver without having to re-record from the start. Uh, so real cool uh, time saving hacks. But anyway, let's get onwards and upwards with this because there's plenty more to go along. Something that I've demonstrated a couple of times before, and I know uh, David, one of our moderators, David Silk, goes on about a lot. Really cool. I don't play with this enough, um, but the fact that you can actually control everything with your playback uh, very easily using the JKL keys on your keyboard uh, to kind of uh, shuttle the transport through JKL uh, really cool keys to remember space uh, like this so start this is a show dedicated to this is a show dedicated to first response okay which will take me back to the start if I hit shift X it changes what happens to my playhead watch this shift X and now I start playing this is a show dedicated shuttle. to show dedicated to first responders K and it'll stop where my playhead is K and it stops no dedicated so that's quite good if you want to stop the playhead ex exactly in one place like that. And you can go faster by double-clicking uh, J or L, and then K kind of stops the playhead where you want. Usually I hit Shift and X uh, to change the default behavior of this playhead because I usually like the playhead to return to where I started from. So this is a... This is because I'm often uh, auditioning things and uh, wanting to get things in the exact place. I'm kind of like, oh, is that right? This, this, 
This, and this, I, I this. often keep slamming the space bar to find out if I'm right. If I hit shift and X, however, this is a show. It will stop then after the, the, the point where I was playing. So dedicated to and it keeps playing on and on. First responders. And there you go. You see, so yeah, you can choose whatever works for you. Uh, but if you're editing and you're trying to find an edit point, uh, you may well want the playhead to stop uh, where you chose to stop well, rather than returning back to the start again. So uh, well worth uh, knowing that. Uh, if you're fortunate enough to have home and end keys, you can also use them to move the playhead to the uh, start or the end, the very end of a clip. Uh, I I have one of the the small Apple keyboards without the uh, the numbers, uh, the extra numeric keypad and home and end keys. So I don't think I can really do that. Um, but it's handy if you have the bigger size keyboard. Um, you can also hop between uh, these editing tools and I highly recommend you kind of try and memorize these. Uh, sometimes I get a slap on the wrist because I actually go up to click uh, to change. But really, you should be trying to memorize all the different tools available to you in Audition so you can slip between them. The one you'll use most of the time is this one, the T, T hotkey, time selection tool, which allows you to select and edit, select and delete. OK, and do all that kind of stuff. Select and play back. This is uh, but you've got uh, marquee selection tool. E, let's click E on the keyboard. Here we go. Marquee selection is good for selecting different frequencies. Uh, so I can highlight this frequency. This is a show dedicated to... And you can select frequencies. Maybe even the bass here. This is a show dedicated... And you could delete all the bass if you want like that. And then go back to T, time selection, to play back. This is a show dedicated... I've lost all the bass there. How funny. Uh, then you've got stuff like lasso, which is on the D hotkey. You can lasso a part of the audio. This is good if you're trying to get rid of there's like an annoying click or something in the voiceover. And you say, oh, yeah, there's the annoying click. Lasso it. Delete. Gone. Something like that. Uh, you've got a paintbrush selection tool, P, which, again, you can sort of paint and delete there. Kind of deletes without a, a sort of final uh deletion there you're kind of just uh, photoshopping it essentially and then you've got your uh, spot healing brush which I've uh, mentioned multiple times is good for removing frequencies uh, with a kind of um, almost uh, what is it they call it in photoshop that uh, being self-aware of the surroundings so it doesn't actually delete audio it just deletes the the frequencies the the dominating frequencies and kind of yeah gets rid of a sound you might not want to be inside the audio. So there we go. We've gone through uh, so far quite a bit, haven't we? Recording favorites, assigning hotkeys, assigning your most used effects to hotkeys, uh, going between multi-track and waveform using 0 and 9, shuttling, uh, using the tools in the waveform. Next, we'll move into the multi-track and do a few uh, multi-track hacks because there are loads of things we can do there. Uh, nudging is something I don't often do, uh, but I know David Silk is a big fan. Uh, David is the guy who maintains the wiki on the Music Radio Creative community all about uh, Adobe Audition shortcuts. And we'll probably get on to copying and pasting and ripple deleting and things like that if we can. There's just literally so much uh, you can do at the touch of a keyboard or a, a mouse flick. Um, if you want to know something specific, if you're struggling, you think there must be a fast way to do this in order audition uh, post it now in the Q&A if you're watching live and if I cannot answer you live or I do not know the answer I will endeavor to find out the answer for you uh, or one of our community may well know uh, so we'll, we'll definitely work something out for you but do post your questions as I always uh, love to read them and answer them as much as I possibly can Talking about Q&A, uh, let's throw a few more uh, questions up on the screen and see what we've got here uh, right now. Uh, so we have got, uh, let's see here, oh, went, went back to screen share, didn't want to do that. Let's go back to uh, uh, the Q&A here. That's one from uh, David Hunter earlier, mrc.fm slash shortcuts if you're interested in checking out the, uh, the community wiki there. Um... We've got a question here. Uh, does it record settings you don't change or does it say it hasn't been changed so don't change it regardless when you run a favorite? Good question. So uh, when I was setting up the dynamics processing there, uh, if I didn't change an effect, that 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 effect that I didn't change would be essentially the default. So if I'd left the ratio at 5 to 1 on my dynamics processor, it would then always be a ratio of 5 to 1, even if I changed it later, um, because you're saving essentially the settings as they are in the effect that you're using there. Uh, 
What do we got here? Uh, let's have a look at this one from Gear Up Alex. How to adjust amplitude volume for shortcut adjust key for height or high or low uh, volume. How to adjust amplitude volume for shortcut? Um, well, there are many ways you can you can do that. So uh, a cool way to uh, change the actual volume of audio uh, is using this heads up display here. You can kind of choose the volume you want like that. Turn it up and down which is kind of handy, and you can choose by how many dB. But I guess what you could also do is, uh, let's go and see if there's a, a shortcut assigned, Alt and K. Uh, if I type in amplitude, amplitude, um, what you may want to do, I mean, depending on how fine grain you want to go on this, you could do something, for instance, I know in effects there's amplitude and compression amplify, and you can choose to amplify a 1 dB boost or cut, what I could do is record some favorites. So let's do that really quickly. Um, so this one will be a amplitude boost by 1 dB. Apply. And we'll stop that now. And I'm going to call this, I'll just call this A plus 1. I'll know what it is. And then we'll record another favorite. And I'll just go and do the inverse. So I'll do amplitude amplify... 1 dB cut, apply, uh, and then stop recording that. And I'm just going to call that A minus 1. Okay, so essentially two favorites there, one for plus 1 dB and one for minus 1. Then if I go into my keyboard shortcuts, I could do something uh, like, uh, let's see here. If I go something that definitely won't be used, like Control, Option, Command. Yeah, that's not being used. Even control option or option command. Option commands used. I could use control option. Let's use control option uh, and up like that. Control option up. And we'll assign a shortcut to that. So let's do A plus one first. A plus one. Uh, I just need to go into that shortcut there. Control option up. And then A minus one. And I could do that there. Control option down. And now I've got those keys assigned. If I want to increase by 1 dB or decrease by 1 dB, I can just hold down Control Option on my keyboard and go up or down. Should be able to. Curious that that's not... Oh, maybe I didn't save it. <laughs> Let's try and save this time. Uh, so we'll go to A plus 1. What am I doing there? That's not right. A plus 1. Shortcut. Control Option up. Let's get that written in. A minus one. And the shortcut is control option down. Uh, that all appears to be hunky dory. Okay. Now. Yeah. And you see that's now increasing. Interestingly enough, though, it's uh it's selecting different bits at the time. So I might need to tweak that just to be the way I want it. But uh yes, it's I think the fact that I had the wave form selected when I recorded the favorite is interfering with things. Uh, usually when I record a favorite, I select nothing and then apply the effect. That's probably why that's working. And then down, yeah, taking it down by a, a dB, but for some reason doing something funky there with the select. Anyway, uh, gear up, Alex. I hope that uh, helps you a little bit with your question there. Praise worship. So you have your Time Saver effects chain in Adobe Audition. Is there also some pre-processing going on with your DBX preamp compressor? Yes, you'd be absolutely right. I do have a DBX 286S. Really, really, really good bit of kit. Highly recommend having something that has a compressor, noise gate, uh, and a bit of low frequency, high frequency uh, detail on it before your mic hits Audition. You don't want to go nuts with adding compression, but I do think it helps give you a nice smooth sound. And yes, uh, it's definitely worth doing it, but a lot of the magic is done inside Adobe Audition. Oh, uh, David has said, change JKL speed uh, to half speed uh, in the playback preferences. Really good tip. Yes, because of course, if you're shuttling through audio, sometimes you don't want to shuttle fast. You want to shuttle slow to find that point you want. Uh, so we want to go into, uh, let's do preferences, audition, preferences, uh, playback, this is a good one from David. And you can actually then change your JKL shuttle speed from normal speed uh, to up to double speed. If, say if you're editing podcasts and you want to quickly get through a whole hour or half speed if you really want to find uh, those edit points. So now let's see how JKL works for me, that shuttling. 
Hang on, let's go to some audio which hasn't been uh, totally annihilated by me. Let's try and undo some of this so we get it back to a, a reasonable state. There we go, that's better, isn't it? And we'll just JKL now. This is a show dedicated to it. There we go. And obviously Shift X then. This is a show dedicated to it. Dedicated. There we go. There we go. And you can find the exact edit point you want. So very handy tip there. That's in your preferences, playback, half speed, normal speed, whatever you like. Really good one. Uh, thanks, David Lewis. Glad you're loving it today. Uh, do my best to do a variety of uh, tutorials as much as I can. Like I say, this might be one you want to rewind on occasion and watch certain bits that apply to your editing process. Um, Beanie's wondering, how would you remove a bird tweeting from an audio recording? Very good question, and actually one that I answered uh, specifically in detail in one of my noise removal live streams that I did. I did it pretty much at the start of the live stream. Let me see if I can track it down for you. So it's always better to have a link rather than saying, yeah, I did that. Because <laughs> that's not really very helpful, is it? It's much better to say, oh, yes, I did that. And you can go find it on the channel. Uh, let's see, noise. It would be something about noise reduction. I can post you up the link. If you're not already subscribed on YouTube, please do go ahead and get in there and subscribe. Right, I found the uh, exact video here. Uh, let's grab the, the link for you. It's called How to Remove Noise in Adobe Audition, and I streamed it live uh, back on the 31st of July, 2017. Uh, so I'll make sure that goes into the live chat for you there. Boom. Go and check that one out, uh, Beanie Draws. I believe it will answer exactly the question that you are asking. Uh, any more questions, fire them in. Uh, I've got plenty of time left, uh, just over 20 minutes uh, to answer your questions. Otherwise, I'm going to fire through more stuff. And uh, for instance, we were going to move over from waveform view to multi-track, hit zero uh, as a, a hotkey to quickly uh, get into the multi-track here. And uh, we've got some really cool stuff in the multi-track. Uh, for instance, I'm always running out of tracks to put voiceovers on, especially when I'm putting lots of crazy effects on the voiceover. As you can see, this is a podcast intro, not too many vocal effects there. But say I've got this, this is a radio sweeper, and I've got loads of tracks already utilized uh, here I want to uh, add in another track to add another effect. Uh, so the best way to create a new stereo audio track is Option or Alt and then A. And uh, yeah, I got David Silk to thank for introducing me to adding as many tracks as you want. Alt or Option A, boom, you can just create a limitless amount almost of tracks. Sometimes you want to take those tracks and throw effects on all of these tracks. Look at the colours of the rainbow there. I do love that. <laughs> it's nice. Uh, you can add buses by uh, Alt or Option and B. That allowed you a stereo bus. Bus A. Let's call it Mike's Mega Bus. And then I can say to all of these new tracks I've put uh, that I would like to... Uh, hang on. I need to just zoom a little bit more so we can see where it's going. Instead of sending it to the master, I can send all of these out to uh, Mike's Mega Bus. And why would you use a bus? A bus is so you can quickly apply uh, an effect or multiple effects uh, to many channels at once without having to go through each channel's effects rack and uh, say apply individually. I can just say, right, all of these tracks, tracks one to five that I've just added, I definitely want reverb on all of those tracks. Studio reverb, 100% dry, about 40% of a wet reverb there. Any voiceover I now put on any of these tracks here going out to Mike's Megabus will get reverb by default. I don't need to add reverb five times. So that's kind of the simplest way to explain why adding buses uh, may be handy uh, indeed for your workflow. I'm going to see more questions. Wonderful of you to be asking some questions during this session. Uh, another five minutes, I'll hop back to them. Uh, right, yes, you can also delete tracks, which say you, you just went a bit nuts and you say, I don't need all these tracks, I'm getting lost. Where are all my voiceovers? Again, you'll want to learn that it's easy to do this using Command, Shift, and Delete, or Backspace, I should say. Boom. Uh, is it Command, Shift, and Delete? I think I got that one right. Uh, oh, hang on. Uh, track, Delete. Ah, oh, ah, okay, no. Command, Command Alt, that's it. Command Alt or Command Option and Backspace will get you that desired effect. Delete all those tracks. It'll even work on a bus. Look at that. Oh, deleting bus tracks can be undone with the undo. Oh, okay. Can be undone with the undo command, but any existing routing will be permanently lost. Yes, I wish to continue. 
And then if I hit Command Z or Command Z for our friends across the other side of the pond, look, the bus comes back. But any routing to that bus would have been lost, and I'd have to reroute any tracks back into that bus. Yeah, Command Z, I mean, you, you, Command Z, you already know this one if you've worked in a word, word processor. Um, yeah, those commands will work to undo things. Whoops. Oh. <laughs> Bye-bye, audition. Let's bring you back. Uh, continue. I just hit Command Z, and it, uh, it undid my copy of audition. <laughs> How funny. Uh, right, here we are, uh, back there in the multi-track. Uh, so yeah, Command Z or Command Z will uh, undo any actions you've taken, either in multi-track or waveform view. Um, but also, you can use copy and paste, so uh, Command C will work, Command C, and then select where you want to drop that, uh, and you can make copies, you see, uh, yes, I know it quite unexpectedly, okay. Uh, I use this often for stuttering, so say if I wanted to stutter the first part of this word, I could copy that little bit there, Command C, and then Command V, Command V, Command V, 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 like that, and do all of that. Uh, another way to do it, though, really handy, is just a hop along here. Now, if you highlight the top bit of this, top bit of one of these waves, it's going to allow you to move this, and if you hold Alt or Option, it's going to allow you to create multiple copies and move them around like that. That's another way, rather than using the command copies, or uh, what did I used to do? I used to right-click this and drop it and then copy here. You can also do that. Whatever works for you, really. Some are faster than others. I think the way I should be getting used to is holding down Alt and doing that. Alt, because that's very, very quick. And as you can see, Audition automatically crossfades when you overlap waveforms. It does all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so that's very, very handy indeed. Uh, you can delete. Oh, you can also uh, ripple delete. Yes, ripple deleting is a really, really good thing. Let's get on to uh, ripple deleting, because that's quite fun. Uh, command or Control and delete. Uh, let's try this. Hang on. Uh, where are we? Ripple delete. Ripple delete the gap. Or select eclipse. Ripple delete the gap. There you go. So you can ripple delete gaps like that. That's not actually assigned to a hotkey. But if I select, say, all of that audio there, right click, go into ripple delete, uh, select eclipse, then you can use... Uh, you can use all tracks, selected clips, selected clips, so shift delete. See, that's Revel deleted those clips there. So you can do all that kind of stuff. Really, really handy stuff. Um, Command K is another one I use all the time. Command K uh, will make little cuts, uh, which is handy if you want to make cuts in, say, a voiceover session and then start moving things around onto other tracks. If you want to keep something locked in time when you're moving it from track to track, uh, keep the shift button down. And then you see it won't it won't move out of alignment. As soon as you let go of shift, boom, uh, that starts moving around on a track. Um, gosh, you can go all day. There's so much here. Uh, 15 minutes left in the show. Get those questions rolling in if you've got any. Uh, let's just have a look. Uh, there are a few more questions coming in. Why is it that you cannot use many of the favorites in multi-track but have to go back to waveform? Really, really good question. Um, and... The reason for that, you can't really use favorites at all in multi-track because favorites really are designed to be run in the waveform view destructively on your waveform audio right there. Uh, so that's more for a destructive sort of, I know I want to do this to this audio and then maybe save out the wave. Um, it's good for those last minute batches that you say, right, you know, I have done the whole podcast. That's all done. It's mixed down to a waveform. Now I want to add the magic sauce that I always do when I've mixed down my podcast, uh, which is a um, slight bit of EQ, maybe a tiny bit of hard limiting, maybe a compressor, maybe even a, a slight noise gate as well, still going on the final mix, maybe some mastering. Those are five effects you can record into one favorite and then apply destructively to the podcast before you finally uh, command S or command shift S, um, save as a file. Oh, talking about saving files, um, the the save shortcuts really don't change in Audition uh, than any other program. Uh, once you know them for like a, a word processor or Premiere Pro, you know them all really. Uh, Command S or Control S will save. Command Shift S will save as, if you want to save as another file name. One shortcut I use all the time, I don't know whether other uh, fellow editors out there use this a lot, but I highly recommend using this, is Save Selection As. Now, there are two reasons I recommend using Save Selection As as one of your main ways of saving audio. Uh, first and foremost, 
This could be a full voice session. Um, say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 jingles, yeah, that I've got to send to a client. Um, rather than trying to cut and paste and put them into new files, what I do is I would go along here and then it's command option S here, save selection as, and then I can save that little selection as, say, uh, V01, like that, a wave. And whatever you select the format as here in save selection as will be remembered. Unlike when you save as, it's always defaulting to wave. Say you could use save selection as to save only as MP3, for instance, and it will remember that. And then I can go here, save that bit of the selection. Again, command option S, and then V02. Uh, the only thing I'd warn you here is just make sure it is save selection as and not save as because the worst thing you can do is have a full voice session where uh, for whatever reason and uh, most voiceovers are sincere professionals but occasionally we all have a day uh, where we say an expletive at the start or something and say what a what an S voice session this is what a load of B this is <laughs> you know? uh, for some reason or another and instead of saving selection you actually save the whole thing and send it to a client yes it has been done before <laughs> Just make sure, or go back to the files and make sure you did indeed save the selection and not with the voice artist uh, slagging off the voice session. Doesn't happen often, really doesn't happen often, uh, but just, yeah, a little thing to bear in mind. Uh, <laughs> these funny things uh, can happen from time to time and you really uh, do not want to embarrass yourself. So, uh, yeah, do check the stuff uh, you uh, are saving if you're sending it on to someone else. Uh, more cool questions coming in. What do we got here? JLab Music. What is the shortcut for muting the sound of audio? Oh, good question. Muting. Are we are we talking multi-track here? Muting. Well, uh, to mute in the multi-track, you would just uh, mute using these M buttons here. I don't know, actually, uh, as far as I'm aware, if you can mute a track on shortcut here. I've never tried that before. You can also right-click a clip and click mute. See, that will mute that particular clip in the multi-track. But I wonder... Way to find out would be to go Option K, bring up the keyboard shortcuts, and say type mute in here. Uh, oh yeah, clip mute. Ah, multi-track toggle mute for selected track. But by default, these are not assigned to shortcut keys. So I could do that. I could do something like, uh, let's find something. Okay, Option M is not uh, in use. So I could do, um, well, seeing as comma is also not in use, let's use comma uh, to mute a clip and let's toggle mute for a, um, a track. We'll make that option M on my Mac keyboard. Now I can go through and I can select any audio and hit comma like that, comma, 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 and I can mute any audio I want. In the, that's actually quite a handy thing to have, JLab Music, so I'm really glad you asked that in the questions. Ten more minutes, by the way, if you've got some questions about editing hacks in Audition, head over to David Silk's awesomely curated uh, Adobe Audition Shortcuts post over in the community, by the way, at mrc.fm slash shortcuts. Um, now, if I wanted to mute a whole track now, if I hit Option and M, boom. Oh, that's cool, isn't it? Boom. Really easy. Um, and if it's something I did all the time, I could do it without having to hold a key down. I could just make it the M key, and I could just go to each individual track and just go M, 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 M. Uh, obviously, M at the moment drops markers. As you can see, I'm dropping markers by hitting the M key. So awesome, awesome question there. Uh, lots of questions. Clearly, this is this is one that's really interesting you. It's it's more of a, a theory-based show today rather than a kind of here I am in the multi-track editing some jingles. Uh, tomorrow, by the way, make sure you tune in tomorrow. A uh, bit of a strange week this week because I'm only doing two shows this week. I'm up in London for the rest of the week. Um, maybe if any of you are in or near to London, uh, let me know in the community. If there's enough of you uh, in or around London interested in perhaps meeting up, if you um, if you do your own podcast or radio show or you're just in the world of audio, uh, start a thread in the community. If enough people want to meet uh, over the duration of Wednesday to Saturday this week, uh, which is week commencing the 6th of November 2017, if enough of you uh, around London are interested, maybe um, we'll organise a kind of mini MRC meet or something like that. So let me know if that interests you. But yeah, I'm doing today and tomorrow, off the rest of the week, but then back as usual, uh, continuing right the way through till Christmas uh, from next Monday. Tomorrow is going to be a fun show because I'm remixing uh, Christmas uh, music 
which I think is going to be good fun. Uh, so if that interests you, yes, I did say remixing Christmas music. Uh, so make sure to add that uh, to your subscriptions. Uh, here it is on my channel here, Christmas Songs Remixed. That's the stream for tomorrow. Last one of the week for this week. Click set reminder and uh, and we can um, have some fun with that tomorrow. That'll be more of me editing in the multi-track. But like I say, this one is more of a, a practical session uh, or theory session, I should say. Theory session. Um, <laughs> so where was I? Uh, how can you change your original voice uh, record into other voice uh, is uh, what Carl is asking. Uh through many uh, effects in the effects menu, I would say. Uh, many that I've covered before. Probably not so much a, a topic for the stream today, though. Uh, how do you record computer output audio into Audition? Uh, Sandy is asking. Um, yeah, it's fairly easy to do that, but you will need an audio interface that allows recording what you hear. Sometimes on Windows PCs, there's a, an option called What You Hear, and you can record that into Audition uh, through some jiggery pokery. Uh, you can get stuff like Loopback from Rogue Amoeba. I think I've got a short link to it at mrc.fm slash loopback. That will allow you to uh, record what you hear using software. There are other other bits of software that allow you to do that from Ro Rogue Amoeba is just all around a good company uh, if you're a Mac user for recording what you hear. But otherwise, something like um, uh, uh, the Focusrite uh, Sapphire Pro 14, I know definitely allows you to do that. Uh, my mixing desk that I acquired uh, in the, back in the summer of this year allows me to uh, obviously route audio back through to my computer, whether it was Mac or PC, it would allow me to do that. Uh, and that is uh, a, a mixing desk I, or mixing board, as you might call it in the US, that I highly recommend. Soundcraft Signature 12 MTK, really cool piece of kit, allows you to do that. Uh, so many ways to do that. Oh, poor David. Yeah, London is a bit far uh, from Prestwick. But like I say, I know many of you watching the stream are, or watching on the replay, are based in London. Uh, so yeah, if enough of you start a thread over at community.musicradiocreative.com saying, yeah, I'm, I'm in London uh, over the next few days, uh, this Wednesday to Saturday, uh, that is, gosh, what dates are they? Uh, from Wednesday the 8th of November until Saturday the 11th of November 2017, I'm going to be up in the big smoke as we call it here on the island. Uh, and yeah, if some of you are, are nearby and could get into town, uh, let me know and uh, maybe we'll organise something. But like I say, it'll just be something on demand. If it's something you're interested in, we'll do it. If none of you are interested, we won't do it. <laughs> uh, what else have we got? Um, that's about it uh, from the questions. So let's see if I can just squeeze in uh, a last bit of value before I disappear for today. And by the way, do watch this back on the replay. Uh, it's definitely worth uh, sort of catching up with. Uh, it's on demand usually on YouTube, on Facebook as well. You can grab it. Uh, so it's all over the place. Uh, and uh, also there is a podcast of this show. So if you ever miss the video replays and you just don't feel you've got enough time to sit there watching all the replays of the shows, um, you can sort of catch up with the podcast, maybe on double speed, uh, either when you're doing the washing up or driving or mowing the lawn, mrc.fm slash podcast. Highly recommend you go there and subscribe and just get these shows delivered to you as MP3 files via the podcast feed. That's mrc.fm slash podcast. Final thing I'm going to throw out at you in this uh, kind of knowledge-packed uh, show today is nudging in the multi-track, um, which David Silk, who you'll see in the chat, um, uses quite regularly. It's not something uh, that I do very much, um, but I'm going to try it right now. And I believe alt and the greater than and less than uh, uh, symbols will allow me to nudge audio. Can you see that? I'm nudging this multi-track clip ever so slightly. You can do a bit more by using, um, let's see, uh, Alt, oh yeah, Alt, Shift, like that. Alt, Shift and those keys will move it like that. But an ever so slight nudge, and the more you zoom in, the more this nudge is gonna be apparent. So rather than messing about with the mouse here, just Alt, look at that fine grain, moving you can really see where you want this waveform to be so if i wanted to align that with the start of the uh the playhead i could do so right about there while working as and it's uh it's perfectly aligned or cut it off a bit clip it a bit while working see and you can just get the perfect nudge there which is kind of cool if you don't want to mess about with really moving the mouse sometimes if you've got a bit of a shaky hand it can be quite difficult so that's where holding down alt or option and nudging can be very handy indeed 
What else have we got uh, going on here in the chat? So much uh, good stuff coming in. Uh, hi to you on Facebook Live. I know a lot of you like to watch on Facebook Live, and that's wonderful. Uh, Colon de Dra, when you record in a mono channel, what's the shortcut to make it stereo? Uh, no real shortcut that I know of, Curlon. Uh, they're on Facebook Live. Uh, but say, like, this is a mono uh, recording of a voiceover. I would go into Edit, and I would Convert Sample Type. Shift and T is the shortcut to get there. And then change the channels to be uh, stereo instead of mono. Click OK. Boom. Stereo. That's how I do it. Uh, Anthony Morris has just bought uh, Adobe Creative Cloud. He's got the latest 2018 edition of Adobe Audition CC. It's great, isn't it, Anthony? I'm glad you're uh, enjoying Adobe Audition goodness there. David O'Steele says, on PC, I have a Logitech ball mouse. Love the thumb ball and third mouse button wheel in the center. There you go. I, I have to say, Logitech do make good kit. Um, Isabella, my wife and business partner, uh, uses a Logitech keyboard and mouse on her Mac. I don't know how she can do that. In my opinion, it is a sin to move away, away from the Apple, beautiful, shiny Apple Magic Mouse. Um, yeah, I don't like the fact they've got a scroll wheel. and It feels a little bit hard to me, whereas I, I just love the kind of iPadiness of or iPhoniness of uh, zooming in and out uh, on, on audio using the Magic Mouse. I do find it magical, actually. A few more bits from uh, you in the chat. Uh just a few more questions I think I can feature at this stage. Uh, <laughs> David is uh, loving the uh, the jingles, uh, the Aphrodite jingle he's talking about there. Uh, uh, and the other David there uh, is saying, uh, I use Nudge for lining up duplicate tracks so they don't phase. That's a really good way to use it. So, uh, yeah, much of what I've covered uh, you'll either find in uh, short-form tutorials over at youtube.com slash musicradiocreative or you can head over into our wonderful, warm, fuzzy community, uh, which I will show you. Uh, it's over here at community.musicradiocreative.com to get to this very post that uh, David Silk, a.k.a. Mr. Shortcuts, has been uh, curating. Uh, you want to go to mrc.fm slash shortcuts. That's mrc.fm slash shortcuts. And the final thing I would leave you with just before I go, if you're not already subscribed, do get over to youtube.com slash music radio creative. Uh, set a reminder for tomorrow's show where we're going to get festive. Yes. Is it okay to play Christmas music on this stream? It is from tomorrow. Uh, we're going to have some fun with that. It's a bit of a festive one. Like I say, last one of the week because I'm in London the rest of the week. And if you do happen to be based in or around London, head over to community.musicradiocreative.com. Uh, feel free to start up a thread saying, I'm in London. And if there's enough of you in London, uh, happy to meet over the next few days. Uh, we might well do a little Music Radio Creative meetup in London. That'd be quite fun, wouldn't it? Thanks for watching today. Remember to catch up on the replay. And I'll speak to you tomorrow from 2 p.m. UK time on Tuesday's edition of Music Radio Creative Live.